We saw the Jets last night. You've been to Jets camp. They're getting a bunch of hype. The Bills have had hype every year now since we knew Josh Allen was great. The Dolphins look like they're even better than they were last year. They had the Jalen Ramsey injury, but everybody's going to have injuries. They still look pretty damn good. Uh, let's start with the Jets since you were there. Where do you think they take this thing now that they've got Aaron Rodgers, now that they have this shine that a team like the Patriots used to have exclusively in that division? Yeah, let's start with Robert Sala. I had a couple of great visits with him during my time over there last weekend, and uh, I really like what they're trying to build there. He, he talked extensively about the kind of guys he wants on his team, how they want to play, you know, the all, all gas, no break thing. I think it's real. And it starts with the people you have in your building. There's a reason for breaks, though. I'm yeah, not a yeah, big, yeah, I'm not a yeah. big believer in all gas, no break. There's yeah. a reason they have that pedal in the car. Yeah. You need it at times. And maybe no is not the right word in front of break. Yeah, yeah, you I know. know. <laughs> but, but 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 you get the point. You know, he's been around some of these teams in Seattle and San Francisco where the identity of the team jumps off the tape. You watch him play. Like, God, these guys are fast. Picture Fred Warner and those guys in San Francisco, Bosa, just how fast they yep. played. And that's what he's trying to create there. But it starts with the kind of people you bring into the building. Right. Okay, you can, you can have it on the T-shirt. You can have the sign on the wall. You can show them the video about what we're going to be about. But if your guys aren't about that, you're never going to be that team. And I think they've made a concerted effort to build the team the right way. Think about what they did on defense. 32nd two years ago, fourth last year. Now, if you dig a little deeper into this, they played a lot of only okay offenses. They played a lot of backup quarterbacks. I get that. But the fact is they've improved dramatically. And I think what he's preaching there is showing up. It's showing up in practice and it's showing up in the game. And even with the young guys last night, you saw that. You saw how fast they play. They play the right way. So I think it starts there. I think they feel good about their defense. I think they feel good about the cornerstone players they have on defense. Sauce Gardner, really impressive. Williams inside, impressive. They got a lot of guys they can build their team around. Their issue has been on offense. Their issue has been a quarterback. Now they bring arguably a top five quarterback of all time. You know, just just, just a, a a generational type player. And I lived it in Dallas. You know, we got into these big games against Aaron Rodgers, and he was the guy that always tipped the field. That and, and throw that he made yeah. to uh, the tight end, Jared Cook, yeah. right? I mean, I mean <laughs> there's, there's maybe one guy in the world that makes that throw, yeah. and it's him. Yeah, and, and, and you know, there, there are issues. You know, we could have done this, we could have done that, but at some point you tip your cap to the guy. I don't think he's the same player he was five years ago, but there's still plenty left. And, and, and maybe more than anything else, when you're there, the team has confidence, and it's not fake confidence. I think they have deep down confidence in the guys they have, and they look over and say, oh, number eight's our quarterback. He's given us a chance. So it's a fun team. The NFL uh, did a heck of a job choosing them to be the, <laughs> be the hard knocks team because they're arguably as, as intriguing a team as there is in the NFL right now. Even though they wanted nothing to do with it, which only makes it more intriguing that they are the no team doubt. that debuts next been, week. Been there, done that. <laughs> the, the whole, the whole all-gas-no-breaks, though, I think it speaks to that suddenness that you need to have. Roll out of bed and go. Just run through the wall. The 49ers have so many guys like that, and I think it's a personification of John Lynch that he knows how to find guys that play like he played where you don't hesitate. And when you have that kind of a defense and you couple it with an Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers said this recently, the idea that I've never really had a, a team – that was so focused on defense. He's always had an offensive head coach between Mike McCarthy and Matt LaFleur. Now, defensive head coach, fine. Nathaniel Hackett and I'll take care of the offense. Defense is going to be better than any defense I've ever had. That makes the offense better. That makes the team better. And that supports this idea that they are really confident. They're confident for good reason. Even though the schedule is not easy, the division is not easy, there's a chance that you got to win the division to get to the playoffs out of the AFC East this year when you look at how hard their schedule is. But they, they, they have that, that, that feel that they're, they're going to be much better than they've been. And Rodgers has a lot to do with it. And like you said, Salah has a lot to do with it as well. Yeah, and, and no doubt. And you've heard me use this, this word a lot, and I think it's so important in football when you're building a team and you're part of a team, is you have to spread the burden around. If you're such a quarterback-centric team, it's all about how your quarterback plays. The NFL's too good. 17-game season, playoffs, you're not going to survive the whole thing. So the best teams are the balanced teams. That's why we were banging the drum for Philadelphia last year. It's like, okay, 
they're really good on the offensive line. They can run it. They run it with different guys. They can throw it. They can throw it to different guys. The quarterback's really good. The defensive line's really good. They can cover on the back end. They're really good on special teams. There were no weaknesses on their team. And so you say, hey, they can win different ways. They can survive this. And so for the Jets, it's been, okay, let's win on defense. Well, you're only going to go so far winning on defense. Your offense has to show up in different parts of your offense. And the other thing I like about them is I think they're going to have a dedication to running the football as well. It's not all going to be, hey, number eight, you know, put us all on your shoulders and carry us to the championship. They're going to run it. They're going to try to be balanced. They're going to try to spread it around on offense. And they have some weapons. This Garrett Wilson, something else. Uh, as, as a young receiver. And then when you think about Cobb and Lazard, the guys that Aaron Rodgers is most comfortable with, I think they're going to have an opportunity to attack defenses different ways. They're going to be fun to watch, but you said it. The gauntlet the first six weeks is real. You know, Buffalo, Dallas, Philadelphia, Kansas City, a lot of really good teams are going to play. So they got to survive that. Yeah, they got the Eagles before their bye. And then there's that Broncos game that that was kind of a respite that may have been a trap for them. They may have viewed that as a week to catch their breath. There will be no catching of the breath when they go to Denver now. now. Uh, And that's why I'm even more convinced that Sean Payton did not intend to say what he said, at least not on the record, uh, because they will be ready for that one. But they're going to need that break after six games, after those games. And it's not like it gets any easier on the other side. That's the thing. And that same basic formula applies to every team in their division. they got to play each other twice. they all got the Chiefs. They've all got the Eagles. They've all got the Cowboys. They've all got the Giants. I mean, tough year for that division. But, but one more thought on that is when you overlay the fact that it is a new quarterback, it is a new offensive system, there are going to be a lot of things. You know, Aaron's at the line of scrimmage, a lot of hand signals late right before the snap. He looks at you. He winks at you. He points at you. All these things, the nuances of the Aaron Rodgers offense, it's going to take some time. So you overlay that with the tough schedule and New York City and everything that comes with playing in that environment. You know, Sala told me, he said, if we went three out of the first six, hey, and we survived it going into the bye, you know, we're going to have a chance coming down the stretch. I think that's a key. And there is a shot. It's two and four at the bye. And the sky is falling. And they have to deal with that with 14 days between games. That, That very likely could happen. All right, you're also in Minnesota. Yeah. And... I don't know what to make of this Vikings team. I feel like they're trying to rebuild on the fly, like they're trying to change the tire on the moving car. They've parted ways with some guys, some defensive players. And I look at the defense last year. I mean, it it can't get much worse than it was last year. So Brian Flores automatically upgrades the defense, but the offense is going to be the thing that continues to make this go. And, you know, with Kirk Cousins, and and I'm 10 years into the NFL, you kind of are what you are. I, I, I can't think of a guy who suddenly got dramatically better. Not that he's bad, but he kind of is settled in where he is. Have you seen anything that suggests that he's going to punch through and get maybe top 10, maybe top 7, maybe top 5? Well, let's start macro with the Vikings. You know, I think they've had a plan, a big-picture plan about how they're going to build their roster. And I think a couple of the moves they've made over the last couple of years that maybe – cause you to scratch your head a little bit. I think they're all intended to. Let's get the, the salary cap right. Let's make sure our money's in the right place, all of that. Because uh, I'm shocked that, that Dalvin Cook is not on their team. I mean, he's an explosive running back. He's still young. There's no sign of, boy, this guy's slowing down. But I think that's a bigger picture decision. It all falls into, hey, where do we want this thing to be from a cap standpoint moving forward? And how do we want to build this team? Uh, so it was interesting being up there. The, the, I had been in Detroit a couple days earlier. There's a tr- tremendous amount of hype about Detroit, and, and I think rightfully so. They won 8 out of 10 down the stretch, all of that. They finished 9-8. and eight. Minnesota won 13 games last year, and I know you're emotional about this because they're your team and they lost in the playoffs, but it's hard to win 13 games. I know we're playing 17 games now, but 13-4, and four, awfully good record. They've done a lot of really good things, and they did that despite – not a, a really good performance by their defense at all. No, no. So, so, so to me, it's the Brian Flores edition is, is the big piece of this thing. They're going to be more aggressive on defense. They're going to try to attack the offense. In fact, when I was there, it was the first day of padded practice, and the offensive coaches were grumbling a little bit that Flores has all these blitzes coming, guys in the A-gap, the safety's coming from everywhere. They're just trying to get the ball snapped early on in training camp, but that's going to be their style going forward. They have some good additions 
Uh, they've tried to clean up the secondary a little bit. So it's going to be fun to see them play. I think they're definitely going to be better on the defensive side of the ball. In regards to Cousins, I'm a Cousins fan. I like the guy. I think it's hard to play quarterback in the NFL, and, and he's done it at a high level. He's been very productive for a long time. Now, has he been big in the big moments? You know, you can certainly point to that. Uh, even last year, not not really on the final drive or in the last game playing the way you want your starting quarterback to play. But, you know, I, I worked for Nick Saban for two years, and every so often we'd be talking about something, and he would turn around and say, relative to what? You know, so it's always about that. I can hear him saying yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, okay, we got we got this guy. We're complaining about him, but, okay, what, what are the other options here? And, and so, to me, Kirk Cousins is a guy you can win with. you got to create a good environment around him, and he'll continue to grow. One last thought. I think about a guy like Rich Gannon. When you said, okay, does anybody get That's better? That's a good point. You know, at the end of their career, guys get better, particularly at that position. Brady has changed the standard. He played till he was 45. Aaron Rodgers is 40. Phillip Rivers, Breeze, all these guys have played later. So these guys will continue to improve. They'll continue to get better. So I'm a fan of Kirk Cousins. I'm a fan of the Vikings. Yeah, Gannon was with the Vikings, had some okay performances, got traded to Washington at one point, was out of the league at one point, and then he hooks up with John Gruden, and he's an MVP. Now he was the MVP after Gruden was left, but Gruden's the one that laid the foundation for him to get to that point. So that that's good. That's good. You're giving me a little bit of hope. <laughs> Absolutely. Although, I'm telling you. You're carrying too much around. This burden of the I've Vikings been going for from 50 your years. years. I'm, I'm used to I should be used to it by now. I don't know what I would do without it, right? I don't know what I would do. I'm so used to this scar yeah. that I can't imagine life without it. A psychologist would have a field day with this. But, but, yeah, I, right. but I'm, I'm telling you, I just – I that switch, I, it's either there or it's not. And some guys flip that switch. Like Joe Burrow, prime example. He embraces – Get me to the postseason. He's a different guy in the playoffs. He's aware of it. He welcomes it. He, he wants it. I feel like Cousins, and they were very open about his meetings with a sports psychologist during the quarterback series, but when he gets in those big moments, he's too aware of it, and he doesn't react to it. It's like you need to get him to think every game is, you know, against the Texans at 1 o'clock Eastern on a Sunday and just play like that. And maybe that's why he was kind of nonchalant in that key moment against the Giants. Maybe he took that a little too literally because he was treating it too much like an average random play instead of the play the season was riding on. Yeah, and I, and I think that's where you can develop as a player and as a team. You know, I was a huge basketball fan, particularly, you know, high school in the 80s. And, you know, it's, it's magic in the Lakers against the Celtics and, and Larry Bird and those teams. If you can remember back, to those, to those teams, the Lakers would win whatever they'd win, 62 games a year, and they would score more points than anybody in the league, and it was showtime, and they were incredible. And then they'd get into these nut-cutting situations against the Celtics in these seven-game series, and they'd slow it down, and the big guys, and they'd play half-court basketball, and all of a sudden the Lakers weren't the same team until they were until they realize this is how we have to play. These are the, these are the, the, the possessions we're going to have late in the game. This is how we handle them. And, and all of a sudden, they broke through. So I believe in that. Even the best teams and the best players ever, they have to learn how to break through. And I think, I think Minnesota and Cousins have a chance to do that. I'm not comparing them to the Showtime Lakers, but I think there's, there's, there's precedent for this, and I, and I do believe they can grow. And I think you got to let this baggage go. I really Lakers do. Lakers came from Minnesota. So. <laughs> By the way, nut cutting is a term commonly used in the gas and oil exploration business. <laughs> Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.